I became involved in producing adult content because, first of all, I was interested in it. Pornography on the internet is a multi-billion dollar industry, more than all, all professional sports combined. It's a 97 billion dollar industry globally. What a lot of people don't know is that Playboy actually owns multiple publications and some of the most hardcore porn sites on the internet. When you deal with the issues of uh, internet pornography and all the web pages that are pornographic, there's like over 400 million pornographic web pages. 89% of those web pages are coming from the U.S. It hurts the person personally, interpersonally, and not just interpersonally with the spouse, but, but also with the kids and family. And one tends to be more isolated, more turned in on oneself. Once you fall once, you know, it's, it's very easy just to um, get in the habit and, and become addicted to it. The vast majority are seeing pornography on a regular basis. So a lot of times, again, it just seems to be the thing that men do. I get constant calls from wives. My husband, I can't believe it, is addicted. He's a good man. What's going on? I remember finding my husband's stash of pornography and being shocked and horrified. First of all, feeling, feeling deeply betrayed because it was a secret. Kids generally get less attention from that parent. Then there's also the risk or the possibility that the kid might go online and see what dad or even mom has been looking at, and that could have a traumatic effect on the child. The exposure to pornography is at such an early age now for children, in particular because of the internet. My, one of my buddies came trotting through the woods with a, with a garbage bag full of penthouse magazines. And, you know, being a, a 10 year old kid, I had pornography growing up. I remember the first pornography I ever saw, I was probably in first or second grade. We found it riding our bikes around the neighborhood. My sophomore and junior year in high school, um, it's basically uh, when I was addicted the most, I'd say. Um, it was basically like every day. And so here I was, 11 years old, 12 years old, and at least bi-weekly, at some, at some level, I was, I was seeing like very explicit pornography. There is this aching hunger in the human being to want to understand the meaning of the human body and human sexuality. I think it's degrading to both men and women when, when it's, it's, such a, it's such a horrendous thing that's happening to our culture and it's devastating to marriages. The ongoing use of pornography um, reduces women to objects, to things to be used for one's own gratification. Many priests, if you ask priests, they'll tell you that the fine, I get emails, the finest men in my parish are now addicted to internet porn. Women take it personally, they get angry, they get mad. The fact that there was this dark secret between us, that really, it made me mad. Uh, wives hate this, I mean women hate it in general. Uh, not to say that women are immune from this problem. Women also have problems uh, related to the internet as well as sexual problems. I was wounded and I hated it. I hate it today, and I, but I didn't have the courage to say I hated it then. I remember the, uh, the feeling that there was something wrong about it. You ask sex offenders, you know, where did it all start? And they all say porn. When the truth of the body is not proclaimed, we fall for the lies. The spouse hates this, uh, takes it very personally, uh, sees it as sinful as well as very harmful to the relationship. Uh, the spouse will usually struggle with feelings of inadequacy and wondering why she's being treated this way. I felt jealous because I started looking at these perfect women with perfect bodies. And I thought, oh my God, I have to lose weight. I have to get a boob job. I have to do something to compete with these women. And I really, I mean, intellectually, I didn't th really think that. But emotionally, I was like, oh, I'm going to lose him. I've already lost him. Oh my God, oh my God, he thinks I'm fat. I mean, you know, your mind just goes crazy. The more that men view pornography, the more women think that's what they have to do in order to be recognized and noticed. It really warps the way you look at every single woman. Pornography is rampant because the hunger is in everybody and the truth of the body is not being proclaimed. Eventually what happens is that you begin to desire to act this out. It is too embedded in our, in our culture. We are all immersed in this pornographic culture and you cannot escape the enticement of pornography, whether you're a Christian or not. It is everywhere. It's everywhere. You can link the issue of pornography to almost every social ill in our culture. 
sexual abuse, incest, divorce, fornication, crisis pregnancies. Um, you know, this, these are all rooted with this, with this issue, lack of sexual integrity. The type of girls that I recruited and the reason that I did so well is because they were usually never before seen and we're talking um, girls who are in college or they already have a degree and they're working on their, a postgraduate degree. Um, I even photographed some professors that worked at the university. You try to love a woman and you only know how to love the pleasure. Just <laughs> incredible as to where our, our society is heading. The insidious nature of pornography is such that so many people don't even believe, they don't understand, they don't realize, they don't experience how they are being uh, dragged down. There was really no way of articulating my problem because in some sense there, there wasn't, un I was unaware that I even had a problem, but at the same time I felt sick about something in my life. Don't look at it ever once. The vulnerability we have in this area, in the modern world, given the sociocultural times, is greater than I think most people realize. It's heinous, it's hideous, it is a, it is a gigantic form of infidelity. It becomes almost a way of perceiving the world. At the college age, it seems to be to me that the mentality was the more you tell something that they can't tell someone of that age that they can't do something the more they want to do it and that's usually the way that I'd recruit is I'd try to talk them out of it and they'd therefore talk themselves into it. We try to write it off as young people but the damage that it caused lasts a lifetime. Most pornography addiction happens in complete solitude and secret. You need to ask for help and you need to tell somebody about it. It is an assault on our church. Uh, we can't re remain silent. We, we know the effects that this has, the use of pornography has on the individual. If that individual is married and has a family, how, how terrible the consequences can be for the marriage. I look at the world and think how pornographers and others have been speaking more about sexuality than has the church, than has Christians, than have Christians. And I feel like we're the ones who should be talking because we've got the truth of God. And he has given us his gift, Jesus Christ, and all of life itself. And to me, we're going to have to find some ways to, to move the dialogue away from all the negative about sexuality and bring it back to the positive. You know, let's talk about what's right about sexuality and get everyone excited about that and, and comfortable with that. And then we can address the parts of our human nature that need redemption and need rehabilitation when we find ourselves sexually addicted or wounded. The solution is the redemption of all things sexual. And this is the gift of Pope John Paul II and his theology of the body. And I, I just, I thank God, I finally learned through theology of the body um, what the truth really is about the human body.